One of the jewels of the garden route, this area attracts thousands of visitors every year. It's got stunning beaches, beautiful looking ocean, especially on a, on a day like today. No wind, sunny. And that's what we want to talk about today. Um, one of the hidden dangers of what really looks like an idyllic beach and an idyllic sea. My name is Torsten Henschel. I'm a volunteer with Sea Rescue and uh, in wilderness and we uh, unfortunately deal a lot with emergencies associated with these rip currents. What we'll talk about today is um, how these rip currents work and uh, what to do if you end up being stuck in one, how to prevent getting into that situation in the first place. Rip currents cause um, so many drownings every single year along this coastline and along South Africa's coastline. So it's worth noting how to read rip currents, um, how to identify them in order to steer clear of them. If we look at a stretch of coast like this, or a stretch of beach, you'll see sandbanks. They are the most obvious thing to identify. Um, and what you see is a line of broken wave of foamy white water, usually in a straight line coming towards the beach. So the, the wave breaks far out and then it starts moving towards the beach and that's, that's over a sandbank. And then to the side of the sandbank, quite often you see a channel and then there's the next sandbank. So the channel sits between two sandbanks typically. What happens is the sea brings the water by way of waves onto the beach and then that water needs to get back to the sea. And it runs sideways and forms uh, a deep furrow in the, in the, in the bottom of the, of the sand. And as the water runs through back to the sea, that furrow gets deeper and deeper. And that channel, that water that's running through that channel is what's called a rip current. And that rip current will run all the way to the back line, slightly beyond the back line, and then it peters out. So what if you do get caught in a current? It can happen easily, the sea is unpredictable, a big wave may push you into that channel. So what happens is typically it's quite deep, you lose your footing and you feel that current taking you at quite a pace away from the beach. It's a scary thought, it's a scary moment and a lot of people will panic. And the really important thing to do at that point in time when you get a sense that you are no longer able to swim against that current, that you can't get you can't swim closer to the beach. You can feel the current taking you, is not to panic. The focus is to keep your head above water. Conserve your strength. Make sure that you are focusing on staying with your head above the water. Don't try and fight the current. The current is stronger than what you are. What the current will do is it will take you further and further out to the back line or perhaps through the back line. You may encounter waves on the way, but the current will still take you back. And at some point, it'll stop pulling you further out. Once you're out there, this is going to sound a little strange, but you're actually in a safe place. The other thing to remember when you first get caught in a current, and as much as you can, bearing in mind you're focusing on keeping your head out of the water, is to, is to alert people to your situation. You can't normally put two hands out the water, put one hand and wave it. Wave it from side to side. Make sure people know that you're in trouble. If you think there's a chance that you can swim back over the, the sandbank, yes, that is the way to get out. But you've got to be sure that you're a strong swimmer, that you're confident in what you're doing. Otherwise, don't take that chance. Wait for help to get you. What do you do if you're a bystander? What do you do if you're someone on the beach, maybe a family member? The key, the key to a person's survival is for emergency services to get to them quickly. So we need to be notified as soon as possible. And there are two numbers that you really want to have in your cell phone whenever you're on the beach. The one is the national number, national emergency number 10177, 10177. And the other is the local NSRI number. 
So when you are visiting an area like Wilderness, make sure you find out what the local NSRI phone number is. Every area, every station has its own emergency number and that's the one you want to have in your cell phone for the duration of your stay so that if you do find someone's in trouble, your family member or just someone that you're seeing, you can phone us immediately. A couple of seconds can save a life.